and we're also known as Camp Lovesick. This week we're showing you how to make a barn door. And we're so excited about it. Let's get to it. Okay, so we just got back from driving the bus to the hardware store and we picked up everything we need for the barn door. We're very excited. And we were going over our last plans for how we're gonna actually build this thing. So, two things we have to consider, three things. One, the weight, because it is going into a camper and onto a house. Two, the casters on the bottom and the thickness that it's gonna need to screw into. And three, the hooks on the top and the thickness it needs to be able to hold onto the door. So, My job is a prop. <laughs> so with those three things in mind, we realized our first plan of doing a sheet of OSB and then sheets of hardboard to kind of decorate the OSB as our door was not going to work. And the reason for this is because the OSB is way too thin for these to hook into. It will just either not be able to hook in at all or to just totally tear up the wood. And then the other issue is that OSB is so heavy. So we sat down and we realized that we didn't have to see this as a door. We had to see this as a wall. It's just a moving wall. And what do you need to build a wall? You need a frame and then the thing that goes over the frame. So that is now what we are doing, pretty much building a moving wall Let's get started. So this is the frame that we're going to build and then this is what we're going to put over top of it with hardboard when we brad nail it all together to give the finished look. So Jay needs to make a frame that's 70 and an eighth by 41 and a half. Can you do it? As well as the cross beam, I've also attached these two side beams on an angle. One of the reasons is because we like triangles and they look cool, and two is so that when we attach our hardboard pieces, every piece has some wood to attach to. Now that I have my frame made, I'm going to cut down the hardboard to turn this frame into a wall. I'm going to rip down the hardboard slats so that will go on top of these solid hardboard pieces. It's time to talk about the unsung heroes of the Camp Lovesick Workshop. This is our office chair that I've named Angelo. When Emily's not around, I rely on Angelo to catch the long pieces of wood that I'm ripping down on our table saw. Thanks, Angelo. Comment below with thanks, Angelo, if you'd like to see more office furniture related content. Comment below with we hate you, Angelo, if you'd like to see us light this chair on fire next week. Comment below with, this is why Emily doesn't let you film things on your own, Jane, if you'd like to get back to the regularly scheduled programming. Now that I have all my pieces ripped down, I'm working on the very fun and not at all tedious task of painting every single side of every single piece and then sanding them all down. While I'm waiting for my paint to dry, I'm going to glue and brad nail my base hardboard to the wooden frame. A helpful tip for projects like this is if you have any deep dark secrets that have really been weighing on you but you can't tell anyone, you can write them on tiny pieces of paper and put them inside this wall and they'll be hidden forever. Okay, so after a long hot day we've painted all of the edges of our pieces, waited for the paint to dry and then sanded them all down. We discovered that it works best when you paint the edges and let it dry versus sanding them down at the beginning because hardboard kind of disintegrates if you just sand it down. So the paint adds that rigidity that you need in order to secure everything in place and then when you sand it down, it just makes a really, really crisp, clean edge. So I'm drawing a line in the very center of our barn door just so that we have a marker for where to line up all of our miter pieces. Okay, so we pretty ridiculously underestimated the amount of boards we would need. We just eyeballed it, so that was kind of understandable. While Jane is going to go cut down more boards, I'm gonna start attaching these. So we're using wood glue to attach all of our pieces of hardboard, and then we're gonna brad nail the pieces of hardboard with the wood glue underneath. The brad nails really just act as clamps to make sure that the wood glue is drying perfectly and firmly. 
so that the whole thing is really strong. But then we also have the brown nails going through the door and into the frame, so that it's adding even more strength. So now that we have our first two pieces on, we're going to go ahead and paint the sides. The reason for this is because we want to make sure that the board behind it is white, so that when you're seeing through the cracks, all you're seeing is white. But we don't want to do that after the fact when all of the boards are attached, because these cracks will get really clogged up with paint and it won't look very nice. So the easiest way to go about this, instead of going back over with a razor blade and cleaning out all the clogged paint, is just to paint it now as you're going. We have a workshop cat. You don't know where this cat is from. Now that all my boards are attached, I'm going to fill all of these tiny little bride nail holes with spackling and then sand it down. Now for the satisfying yet completely terrifying part where I try to cut down the edges of this door. While my paint dries, I'm going to cut down a few pieces of hardboard that I'll use as trim for both sides of the barn door. Before I paint this side of the barn door, what I've done is spackled where the trim on the side matches up with the front of the door. While I'm waiting for that spackling to dry, I'm going to go ahead and attach my casters to the bottom. The hardware that you're going to need in order to make your barn door work are fixed casters that will sit on the bottom so that your barn door will slide across back and forth on the ground. On the top, you're going to need a copper pipe that the barn door will hang off of, hooks that will fit around the copper pipe and drill into the barn door, an elbow if you need to attach it to the ceiling or to a wall, two flanges for either side of your copper pipe, and then adapters that will make your copper pipe screw into the flanges. So for my top rings, I'm adding pilot holes and then I'll screw them in by hand. So how we attach this is simple. We use the flange, the adapter piece screws into the flange, then you stick a little piece of copper pipe into the adapter and the elbow into that. <laughs> I have three hands. <laughs> For the other side, all we're doing is using our flange and adapter piece and then the copper pipe that holds the barn door goes into that hole. We are so hot, but we did it. So hot. Let's show you what we did.